Elizabeth Merrick in his office in Ardmore on June 4th, 1968. Matt and I, yeah, you're doing the interview. Ward, uh, we want to get a lot of information in this interview about you and the Merrick family and, and the oil business and your part in community life and your benevolent work and everything. But to, right to start with, uh, I understand your family has been in the oil business for a long time. What generation are you in, in the oil industry? Well, I'm of the third generation, Mac, in the oil industry. My father, <coughs> my grandfather, J. A. Merrick, John Alonzo Merrick, uh, got into the oil business in Tidyu, Pennsylvania. How do you spell the name of that town? Do you spell it? <laughs> oh, no, it's uh, Tiddy Uta. I think he was the father of Indian uh, extraction. And <coughs> that isn't what they usually call Titus, Pennsylvania. No, that was Titusville. Titusville. Yeah, but it's close to Titusville that uh, Tiddy that, uh, Uta was just a small, very small community. And by the way, that the first wells that my grandfather drilled there are still producing, but only a few barrels a month. Are they still in the Merrick family? No, not a long time ago. The uh, My grandfather sold uh, to J.B. Uh, uh, Rockefeller. John D. John D. Rockefeller, yes. Uh, and he took that money, and after this is after several, he produced the well several years. He took that money and went out to Uray, Colorado, where he bought a gold mine. And after a year, his money went out, and uh, he spent all of his money, and but he had no gold. So he had to come back to. Uh, home base, which at that time had gotten to be Randolph, New York, which is not far uh, from from uh, Titusville, Pennsylvania. Well, was, was that where your father was born, you know, the second generation in the oil business? Well, my Frank, father, Frank W. Frank W. Barrick was born in a, a small community called Nunday, New York, which was near Tiddy Ute in the southern, southwestern part of Pennsylvania. And not, it's almost on the Allegheny River, which is the uh, division line between Pennsylvania and western New York state. What does that W stand for in Willard? Frank Willard. Uh, Frank Willard Merrick. Uh, when was he born? Uh, I believe in some of this material we're looking at here, Ward, I, I picked that up. Born May the 6th, 1862. Uh, in uh, western New York State. I believe that's correct. Well, how did he happen to, uh, was, he, was Frank Debbie in the oil business before he came to Ardmore? Yes. Uh, he, he grew like, uh, he grew up on uh, an oil lease uh, that, that my grandfather had, and he worked as that uh, quite a while when he was, uh, when he was a younger man. And uh, finally, after my grandfather sold out, and my father had gotten married, he thought he would go take Mr. Greeley's advice and go west, mm -hmm. and he went to Des Moines, Iowa, where he established himself uh, for a trade that he picked up from an uncle named Barker. Uh, and uh, he uh, he tried to take children's pictures mostly, 
but the uh, photography business at that time wasn't uh, uh, very lucrative, and finally he had to get other work, and uh, he went into, he went to work for a man making artificial limbs named Raleigh. Uh, it wasn't long until Mr. Raleigh got sick, and my, and my father was the manager of the shop in his place while he was sick. And uh, this uh, later became uh, his main business, and he moved to Chicago where he established the uh, firm of American Hopkins Company, Hop Mr. Ed Hopkins being a partner with uh, my father and they made artificial limbs and arms for until the time he got in back into the oil business that healed it. Well how did he happen to get back in it Ward and, and come to Ardmore? Well uh, Mr. Mike had uh, well, he wanted to be get back into the building, uh, into the into the oil business for a long time, and he had read about some new discoveries at Petrolia, Texas, which is near uh, Wichita Falls, and he went in in uh, uh, of ninth, early 1912. He made a trip down to Petrolia to see if he could buy some leases and eventually get back into the oil business. But he didn't find, he had very little capital and he didn't find any leases that he, he could uh, buy. So he had gathered up a, a geological map which indicated the <coughs> area of uh, Hewlett in the area of Healden, Oklahoma, let's see, you got started? Yeah. Go ahead, Ward. He visited, was visited Healden in the first time, 1912. Yeah. Was there one in drilling out there then? No, oh, there was no oil there in 1912. <coughs> So he got on the train, came in Baltimore, and went back to Chicago. At that time, Mr. Merrick and was a friend of Mr. Skirmerhorn, who worked for Armour and Company as a butter and egg buyer. Mr. J. B. Skirmerhorn, uh, and Mr. Skirmerhorn's father. <laughs> had been an Indian uh, missionary. missionary. The Indians had insisted that uh, Mr. Skirmel Horn's father had be given a head right, and as, uh, as such, uh, which, they, which the commission uh, is given the commission, and uh, the 160 acres that came to Mr. Skarmahorn happened to be one of the best 160 acres in the heel and oil field, which was very fortunate. And to backtrack just a little bit, uh, Mr. Skarmahorn knew that Mr. Merrick had been familiar with the oil business for a long time, and when the field was discovered, the scouts and the lease brokers tried to came to Chicago and tried to lease Mr. Skirmerhorn's land. And Mr. Merrick uh, kept advising Mr. Skirmerhorn that uh, he shouldn't sell a lease, that he should produce the oil himself, which finally they did. Uh, uh, which finally prevailed. For uh, Mr. Stormerhorn then prevailed on Mr. Merrick to come down here and start drilling wells on that land, on his land. And of course, 
they got good wells, big wells. Now, when, what year would it have been, Ward? That well, that was in 1914. I don't remember just what time of the year in 1914, but it would be in 1914. As part of the consideration uh, for Mr. Merrick, Mr. Merrick uh, being Mr. Stormhorn's advisor that, and, and, uh, and superintendent, <coughs> Mr. Stormhorn gave uh, Mr. Merrick a lease, an oil and gas lease on 20 acres of uh, his land. And I've got the Mr. Merrick back in the oil business. And I put Mr. Merrick back in the oil business. The, an interesting part of the lease uh, that uh, Mr. Skirmahorn uh, gave Mr. Merrick was that it had an overriding, ro a sliding scale overriding royalty. And the top of uh, consideration in that was a three-fourths royalty, which of course is very high, and it graduated downward by sixteenths <coughs> uh, to a, a low of three-sixteenths, which it, and since it is still producing, that's what the royalty on that track is now. And that's still in the Merrick family. It's still in the Merrick Barber's interest. Yeah. Well, um, when did you uh, become active in the, the business, Ward? Yourself? Well, let's start with when you were born <laughs> and where. <laughs> well, I was born in uh, Ran a little town of Randolph, New York, which is near Lake Chautauqua in the western part of New York State. And my father moved uh, my mother and myself uh, to Chicago in, in uh, 1904. I was born on June the 27th, 1895. So I wasn't very old, too old, when my father moved to Chicago. Oh, you know McDonald Warren? Yes. Well, however, no, I say yes. I was the only living child. I had a sister who died before I was born, and and uh, well, when did uh, when did you move to Ardmore? When did Mr. Frank W. move his family to Ardmore? Well, he moved. Uh, Frank W. moved his family. Uh, Mr. He and Mrs. Merrick, uh, who Mrs. Elizabeth Merrick was uh, his second wife. My mother died uh, uh, in 1906, right after she moved to Chicago, and right after moved to Chicago. And my father later ma married uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Merrick, who was my stepmother, of course. Uh, they moved to Ardmore in um, 1918 or ni uh, 1918 after the World War, right after it ended, right after it ended. And uh, I had been in World War One. I, I enlisted. Uh, in June of 1916, is a truck driver. Or would that have been 17? That's when the U.S. got in the war. Wasn't it war in 1917? Yeah, 17. 17. I, you're right. I get mixed up a little bit. 1917. And uh, went to, uh, they sent me out to uh, Camp Funston in Kansas. And later on, I, while I was there, I put in to transfer to the Air Service and finally was, was, uh, was transferred when they sent me to Rantoul, Illinois, where I went to uh, ground school, as they called it then, at the University of Illinois, and finally received a, a, a second lieutenant's commission at Rantoul, Illinois. And became an aviator.
try all over again on the French plane. Uh, but the armistice was uh, signed uh, uh, a week before I finished all of my flying training as a pr pursuit pilot. And uh, though I could have gone on patrol duty over the German lines at, uh, that winter, I uh, objected strongly and they let me come home. Well, technically, you classify as an overseas veteran, though, because you served overseas uh, during wartime. I got overseas flying pay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the big thing. <laughs> well, what, uh, what other education did you have, Ward? Did you, uh, you said you went to the University of Illinois when you're taking your oh, well, flight training. Well, I finished uh, high school in 1950, Oak Park High School, which is a suburb of Chicago. And uh, that, as a result of our, our uh, banquet at the at graduation banquet, I had I contacted uh, typhoid fever and I was sick the next, uh, I had a very severe case and was, and, uh, was sick uh, through September of that year. And I didn't go to college but, and then the war came along and I never have yet been back <laughs> to college. Well, when you got out of the army that was just about the time the folks moved to Arden, and that's that's correct. They hadn't been down here very long until I got back from France, and uh, I came down here the first day of March in 1919. Well, Warden, in that period then, uh, uh, Frank W., your father, was was becoming established in the oil business as an independent operator, I guess. Yes, that's correct. And uh, he and Mr. Uh, Skirmelhorn had drilled a few wildcat wells which were uh, bone dry, and uh, but other than the Hilton production uh, that they both had at that time, was that, which was all of the production that they had at that time. Um, well, did you become active in the business with him when you came back from service? Well, yes. I mean, I was thinking about how, uh, how you... Mr. Sturmhorn and Mr. Merrick uh, built a small gasoline plant on the, on the uh, uh, Sturmhorn lease, but they uh, didn't have a great deal of gas, and it was not very much of a success. But uh, I went to work primarily in the gasoline plant and mainly to uh, uh, load casing head gasoline. My job was to load uh, casing head gasoline into tank cars that were, of course, no nearer than Hugelitz. If I didn't know enough to be afraid of the very volatile gas that uh, <laughs> was uh, ever present in loading a, 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 a tank car, even, even after one of them blew up Ardenmore in 1915. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a wonder it didn't blow up, but it never did, and so I <laughs> was lucky. And I noticed in the material we have here that uh, your father died uh, in August 1945 at 82. Was he uh, rather active in the business up until his death? Yes, quite active. Uh, however, uh, we, he, he had, of course, been in, uh, very active all through the period that uh, we've already talked about and, and after that period up until uh, 19... Well, really, up to the time he died, and uh, um, but uh, in early 1945, uh, he sold what was uh, all of the oil wells, which uh, uh, belonged to a corporation, which uh, the stock was owned by. Uh, Mrs. 
Elizabeth Merrick and myself and and Mr. Merrick. And uh, we sold, he sold that uh, to the Phillips Petroleum Company. There was uh, approximately 4,000 barrels a day production, a little more than 4,000 barrels a day production, and 560 odd wells. Now, where were those located? Mainly in West Texas and East Texas and North Texas, and uh, of course through Southern Oklahoma here. Well, <coughs> against uh, started more on your own family and career, Ward. Uh, when and who did you marry? Well, when I got to Ardmore, I uh, I had was out in the oil field a good deal, and there was a school teacher out there that I met named Jake Eichert. And uh, uh, one way and another, uh, there, of course, there were a lot, lot of men out there and very few girls, and the competition was really <laughs> rough. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, I managed somehow to, uh, to stay in line and, uh, and uh, get an occasional date. And uh, to the uh, Jinx and I were finally married in, uh, on, uh, in October 26, 1922. Up to that time, we had uh, always lived in the oil field or I had always lived in the oil field, and Jinx had worked for a, a uh, automobile dealer in Healden for quite a long while. So uh, it made it pretty good for me. <laughs> who was her father? Well, her father was Milton Eichard, who uh, uh, was a, a rancher and uh, but, uh, and who had a very, who came to uh, Parker County, Texas, uh, well, I'm not sure what year, but, uh, and uh, he had married Nellie Waits in, in Louisiana, and uh, of that marriage, why, of course, Jinx was born. Mr. Mar Eichert had been married before and uh, had had three children, and then Mrs. Eichert had uh, had uh, uh, three of, of hers. I was thinking that I read of some Eicherts and cattle barons over in Texas. That's right, and they they were. They were in, uh, started in Parker County and then moved to Clay County, which is, of course, north in Henrietta is the, is the uh, county seat of, uh, of uh, Clay County. But uh, Mr. Eckerd, uh, uh loaned too much money and the cattle business got too badly and he finally sold what he had and moved to uh, 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 Ringling, Oklahoma. It's not Ringling, it's uh, moved to Cornish. He moved to Cornish, Oklahoma, and you know, where he had free range, and he started in the cattle business there. But uh, th I don't know just exactly when they moved into Ardmore, but it was to for the benefit of the children and the better schools they had uh, here than they did at Cornish at that time. And uh, Mr. Eichard uh, took, uh, for one thing I remember, he, he, uh, he took the contract on building the original city lake. And then he was police chief for a while. But I can't, uh, I don't remember the dates. Yeah. Well, going back to the oil business, uh, uh, when did you uh, become a, an independent operator yourself in your own right? Well, uh, as uh, long, all through the period that Mr. Merrick was uh, very active, uh, he said to me one day, he said, Ward, you're spending an awful lot of 
of my money, you just spend some of your own. <laughs> and so uh, from that time on, I took an indi individual interest in, in every play that we had of, uh, from 5 to 10 percent. And it was kind of a gradual deal, but uh, it, it grew so much faster than my income would go. I soon owed, owed more money than I could <laughs> possibly imagine a bank, bank had. Uh, but to that end, uh, our, uh, it, and that followed through all the way to the time that Mr. Merrick sold F.W. Merrick Incorporated. <coughs> After that, I had some leases of my own and drilled uh, quite a few leases of my own and, and drilled quite a few wells. But uh, now I, I'm totally out of the drilling business, and the leases that I used to manage are in in uh, water flood units of one character and another, or secondary recovery units of one character and another, and I only manage just a few wells. Oh, you had the uh, time that you sold the company to Phillips, you had some individual stuff that yeah, you kept. A good deal of that I haven't ever sold, but Phil Phillips manages. Award, uh, when did you establish the Merrick Foundation? Well, the Merrick Foundation was established after my father passed away. <coughs> and Mrs. Merrick had, uh, made several gifts to nieces and nephews, there being not, uh, there no, no real close, no children of her own. And uh, she, of course, had quite a quite a little capital and wanted to do something with it. And she talked it over with me for oh, over a period of two or three years. And finally, she decided that she would like to establish a charitable foundation in a, in a, as a memorial to Mr. F. W. Merrick and to her husband and. Uh, asked me to get it done for it, which uh, to do to do the work for it, which I did do. Uh, the original amount put in the Merrick Foundation was not very great and it had uh, 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 there was very little to spend from the foundation and not a great deal was done. She uh, did approve uh, gifts to some of the uh, uh, orphanages and some to the churches and in uh, uh, those things, but uh, after she passed away, uh, of course, all of her her entire estate went into the Merrick Foundation. What is the full official name of the foundation? Or is it the Merrick Foundation? I wondered if it had Frank W. in it. it just no, it, uh, all of our uh, letterheads and anything of that sort uh, uh, has an inscription on the bottom of each page which states that it is to the uh, honor and, and uh, uh, F. W. Mrs. Merrick's husband, Frank W. Merrick. When did uh, Miss Elizabeth Merrick pass away? In, uh, on February 17th, 1948. That was the day of the uh, American And American the original Foundation. trustees were, besides myself, were Louis Bastine and Robert Bayless. Okay, let's um, you find the date that Mrs. Elizabeth Merrick passed on one. Yes, May, it was on May 24th, 1958. Well, to get uh, into this matter of uh, community and state service ward, uh, I know that you had a big part in uh, the original 
planning and construction of our Memorial Hospital of Southern Oklahoma and uh, in carrying on the hospital since it was built. I believe the first uh, effort on that was long about 1952, wasn't it? Well, actually, the very start of it, other than just meeting on the street corner, was a meeting that was called by uh, several of us uh, to meet in the dining room of the Ardmore Hotel on the 31st day of May, 1950. Uh, Mrs. Merrick uh, uh, was very interested in the, in the uh, formation of a foundation to, to uh, uh, build and operate a hospital here. Yes, and it was Elizabeth, Elizabeth Merrick you're talking about. Yes, Elizabeth Merrick. And he, that was one of the principal objects uh, or interest that she had in, in creating this charitable foundation. Well, now, you were involved in two foundations along about that time then, weren't you? Yes, the Bank Foundation and the, and the uh, uh, Southern Oklahoma Memorial Foundation, which, of course, uh, was formed uh, as a result of this first meeting in 1950 uh, to receive donations and to go ahead and build and, uh, and operate the hospital, which uh, was completed in... Uh, it was dedicated, I believe, and officially opened in June, June 1955. June of... May the 31st, it was, in, in, in 1955, and everything went ju just fine, except one elevator stopped. <laughs> well, you know, that... Uh, drive the whole deal of building that Southern Oklahoma Memorial Hospital was wonderful, wasn't it? But yes, it was. So well, we, had a worked on it. we had a total of uh, 1,600 people to, to as I, I'm depending on my memory, raise a, a, about a million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And I thought that was just wonderful. Well, the hospital, of course, has borne it out since by being a success, making Ardmore a medical well, center. I, I think so, and it's it's getting to be a, a. Of course, right now we're building an addition to the hospital, and I think it'll be a very important addition to the hospital. Well, incidentally, I'm sure that you and the Merrick family contributed liberally to the funds for the original building and also for the addition that's being built now. Well, uh... uh the fund was, was a tremendous help. Uh, uh, of course, uh, originally, Mr. Noble, uh, while in, before he died in, in... Lloyd Noble. Lloyd Noble, yes. Uh, before he died, was quite interested this and uh, together with Leon Dalby and, and myself and actually uh, uh, I guess uh, we three uh, had uh, done more talking about it before than almost than was done afterwards. <laughs> uh, well you uh, served as the first president of the board of trustees. Yes. Didn't you? Mm -hmm. And for many years. Well about about ten years, I think. Uh, Are you still on the, the board? I'm still on the board, but Ward Jr. is, is the present chairman of the board. And well, certainly, in, the, in talking about the, the Merrick family, we hadn't mentioned a thing about your children. How many of you have? <coughs> who are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, Jinx and I have two wonderful children, a daughter and a son. Uh, our daughter is is Mrs. Charles Cole, who now has three children, three boys of her own in Oklahoma City. And her name is Elizabeth. Yes, her name, name is Elizabeth. Uh, uh, and, uh, of course, Ward Jr. lives here in town, and he and Marianne have uh, 
have uh, four children. So right, well now you have a total of seven grandchildren. Now. Total of seven grandchildren, all good looking and good health and growing fast. More juniors associated with you here in yes. that business. Yes, and doing, I think, very well. You, I'll ask you, do you remember? Because I don't know my own kids approximately when they were born. <laughs> Elizabeth is oldest, isn't she? <laughs> well, Elizabeth was, was um, born in the um, uh, first, second day of January in 1924, and Ward was born on the fourth day of January in 1928. <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> mighty good. Most of these I have to ask my wife <laughs> when <laughs> Alice were born. Well, Ward, in your other areas of community service, uh, I know from personal acquaintance with you that you have rendered wonderful service in, in a number of areas. And to begin with, in the oil industry itself, so what have been the organizations that you've been active in? Well, for a long time, we had a local organization we called the uh, Southern Oklahoma uh, Oil Group. And of course, I belong to that. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, my main interest all through the years has been the uh, Independent Petroleum Association, which uh, Ward Franklin started. The IPPA. IPPA. And uh, I've been uh, this last year. I missed their their annual meeting, which is the first one I've missed since that organization started. Mm. About when did it start, Ward? Uh, it was organized, at, uh, the IPAA was organized in June of 1929 in Colorado Springs. Yeah. Well, that's one got an idea of that length of time there that you attended the convention. <laughs> well, it's getting to be too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, next year it'll be uh, 40 years. 40 right? years, yeah. yeah. Well, what about the Oklahoma organization, Ward? Well, it, it uh, was started by Roy Woods, mainly in Oklahoma City, approximately uh, uh, 15 years ago. The Oklahoma Independent, Independent Petroleum Association. And we've done quite a lot of good uh, f uh, for the state and, and for the uh, uh, oil, oil men, too. What offices have you held in the state organization? Well, really, I've just been a, I've been a director all this long time. I have not been any of the regular, I uh, have not been a, an officer of the organization at all, although I've been present at practically every meeting. Uh, I thought you were vice president of it for a year or two. Well. If I was, I'd forgotten it. <laughs> I, was I didn't have to serve. <laughs> looking at this issue on the on uh, the magazine on your desk here, it says Vice President Ward Mack. <laughs> that looks like you. <laughs> uh, well, what about your activities in state and local history, Ward? When did you get interested in history? Well, it just comes uh, uh, as an outgrowth of some of the things that you get into. Uh, uh, when you try to do good with the money available from, in this case, the Merrick Foundation sources. We, we've gotten interested in so many different things that it's hard to tell just for when you do that. Yeah. But I think that uh, mainly I, on occasion of meeting Mr. George Shirk one time, he got uh, talking about the old four-door buckle over here in Fort Washita and, and uh, uh, that it was just a shame and a pity and uh, uh, that it couldn't be obtained and they had uh, a 
talk to Mr. Colbert into giving them an option the year before, and, and they couldn't ever raise the $10,000 to give the option and to, uh, to use the option to buy the land. And after thinking about it some time and getting a little bit into the history of, uh, of Fort Washington, I decided that would be uh, another good project for the Merrick Foundation. And to that end, why uh, we did furnish the $10,000, which which bought the uh, bought the land uh, for 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 uh, for which was originally Fort Washington. For the Oklahoma Historical Society. Well, we took it in in the, to our own name and then passed it on by deed to the uh, Oklahoma Historical Society. Well, I believe you continued to put considerable money into it for several years to carry on the restoration. Well, that that, that is true. After we got it, it was a horrible looking place and uh, probably. Moving a little bit into the history of, uh, of Fort Washington, I decided that would be uh, another good project for the Merrick Foundation. And to that end, why uh, we did furnish the $10,000, which which bought the uh, bought the land uh, for 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 for, uh, for which was originally Fort Washington. For the Oklahoma Historical Society. Well, we took it in in the, to our own name and then passed it on by deed to the uh, Oklahoma Historical Society. Well, I believe you continued to put considerable money into it for several years to carry on the restoration. Well, that that, that is true. After we got it, it was a horrible looking place and uh, probably deteriorated and run down and people had taken the buildings and stones and rocks out of the buildings for souvenirs and so forth for uh, over a long period of time and the underbrush was so thick with locusts and bulldogs and whatnot that you could hardly walk through it and so we started first a cleanup campaign on it, which uh, lasted for over two years. And the Merrick Foundation, being uh, the only part of, only uh, organization around who had any money apparently to put into it, uh, we stood the cost of all of that. And <clears throat> then after we got the original. Uh, cleaned up to some extent, the, the ground cleaned up to some extent, and uh, got the uh, weeds cut and so forth. So I, then we be, uh, then we started in to make partial restoration of the buildings and to make them safe and sound for some years to come. And that's uh, that's where they stand now. Only except that the whole place is uh, is park-like now, and there's ample uh, picnic grounds and observation points and uh, signs uh, and things of that sort uh, to uh, give the visitor uh, something to see. And the state is belatedly putting a little money into it. Yes, now. last year the the uh, 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 state uh, appropriated ten thousand dollars, which is supposed to be an annual appropriation from now on, uh, to to pay the custodian and and some of the uh, uh, repair work that, and upkeep work that's necessary all the time. But it doesn't near cover it. Needs about it needs nearly ten thousand dollars more to adequately keep it up. And what I can uh, bear witness to the fact that you were one of the 
main supporters for formation of the Chickasaw Historical Society at Ardmore in 1955 and was a charter trustee and has continued to serve on the board of trustees by local historical society. We're awfully proud of that. Well, we are. I am. And uh, uh, unfortunately, it seems like you've got to get old enough to die before you get interested in the, uh, the genealogy of your own family and, and the history of the country and uh, things of that type. Uh, why that is so, I don't know, but it <laughs> seems to be the case too often. Well, we have an awful lot of people who like to read local history, but they're not very good at getting out and digging it up. <laughs> well, what about your part in the formation of this uh, oil museum, Ward, up at the Oklahoma Historical Society? Well, the, there again, uh, uh, a group I have, I have, I get myself in places in one thing and the other that seem to read some of these things <laughs> just, just naturally. And, and uh, a, a group uh, uh, just uh, happened to be together at one of these uh, oil meetings that uh, happened periodically, and, and they got to talking about what a shame it was that uh, uh, they didn't have this and didn't have that uh, where, where it could be seen and explained and used as a, more or less as a museum piece and things of that sort and that uh, uh, all of the old equipment was rapidly being melted down in the junk and, and it now disappeared from the face of the earth and so uh, somebody spoke up and said, well, let's get an old rig and put it up there to, behind the uh, historical building and we'll, we'll start it off. And so that's the way it started with Bill Payne and, and uh, oh, I, some of the others that were around at that time. And uh, some of us knew where this piece of equipment was, and some of us knew where some other was, and we gathered it all together, and uh, and now have quite a quite a exhibit of of authentic uh, drilling equipment and machinery of one character or another that connected with the oil business, uh, put together in a in a really a nice fashion, and it's up there in good shape. I noticed up here on your wall a plaque of appreciation to you, and they call it the Mid-Continent Oil Museum of the Oklahoma Historical Society. That's what you officially call it? Yes, that's right. I see also on the wall, Ward, that you received a Distinguished Service Citation from Oklahoma University. Well, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, When Lloyd Noble was uh, on the, uh, a regent at the University of Oklahoma, among other things that he was, he has done so capably, he started the Oklahoma University Foundation. He was one of a group that started it, and uh, uh, I had several visits with Lloyd along about that time, and I can look back now and see that uh, he actually promoted me to go on the board of the new Oklahoma University Foundation. Uh, he had, a, I guess Lloyd had a good deal of confidence in me because he knew I could, could fill him in on all that went on <laughs> on the being on the board. Well, I got to be the chairman of that foundation. I, I was very proud of, of, uh, of that group because it was a very high class group and still is. And uh, the acquaintanceships that I have made uh, through the foundation and, and the things I've learned about I had uh, were a revelation to me in many, many different sources. 
and I've enjoyed my work on that, and I think that uh, uh, whoever were the uh, people who named uh, the armories, uh, once in a while, uh, uh, not once in a while, every each year, I uh, thought that uh, I deserved it, and so I am the recipient of it. I'm quite proud. Are you still serving on that foundation? Yes, still but I, I have been uh, chairman of it now for some 10 years. Another question I intend to ask you when we were talking about the Merrick Foundation, Mulder, are you president of the Merrick Foundation? Yes. President of the board. Who are the present trustees? The present trustees are Ward Jr. and Elizabeth Merrick Cole and uh, uh, Bob Davis and Denny Fitzgerald. Well, back to the University of Oklahoma, uh, didn't you uh, give them a computer center or something, Ward? Well, yes, uh, uh, we gave them $250,000 over a period of three years, I believe, to build the present uh, computer center building, which is on the north campus of the university. Um, it's a great long story about the starting of the computer program at the at the university, and I think it's just well enough to say that uh, it started in is almost a, a new idea, and the and uh, but it has progressed to now that the Oklahoma University has one of the very fine computer programs of of all the universities. Are there other things that you've been uh, involved in along the line of education, such as scholarships or? Well, not any scholarships particularly. We have a few, but uh, we haven't made a practice of giving scholarships. Uh, what we have continued doing at the University of Oklahoma is sponsoring the Oil Information Center. Two, Ward, and you started to tell about the Oil Information Center there. We have uh, been uh, seeking and getting contributions from all of the large companies in the matter of uh, uh, old scout cards, logs of all characters and kinds. They have all the old logs from the uh, uh, Corporation Commission, uh, the tests of every kind and character that they run on oil wells. Uh, we've got cores by the hundreds and that are identified as to source and, and to kind and uh, anything of that type that, uh, that uh, uh, should be in the library of, of information for the oil business. And it's grown and grown and grown until now. Uh, it's on the south campus in one of the old uh, wooden buildings down there. And it shouldn't be in an old wooden building because if that ever get a fire, it would be terrible. And uh, those things are, could never be replaced. What other things have you helped with around Ardmore or those uh, and oh, well, the board and participation too. First we, point. We've done uh, I, we've done quite a little thing. Leon Darby and I created what is now the uh, the uh, community activities uh, uh, group, which is another uh, charitable foundation, and I think it has done really wonderful. Our first act out of that, however, was to. Uh, was to create the present uh, swimming pool that's uh, uh, had so much use. And then we built the second swimming pool there by the colored uh, chamber of commerce and gave it to the city. Uh, we've uh, also, the Darby Foundation ourselves, started the bookmobile. We financed it for two years yeah. or a little more and, and, started and got it going. Started the Chickasaw Library System. Yes, started for this area. Yeah, and uh, that's another thing that succeeded wonderfully. Uh, yes, sir, and, and I'm very proud of that also. The, then we built the with the Dobbies. We built the chapel down at uh, at Lake Murray, and uh, all that's been wonderful, really.
and I'm so happy that that we uh, built it. So the let's see, stop it. We have given uh, money for just a lot of uh, uh, programs, churches uh, of all kinds. We uh, uh, helped the uh, ladies of the league build the fountain at the Central Park. Uh, and you helped with the vocational technical center. We helped with the, the, yes, we have helped with the school, that uh, vocational school. And uh, uh, just about too many things to remember. <laughs> Offhand, I know. <laughs> well, it, it uh, really keeps me busy, uh, uh, keeping up with it. And, and uh, I enjoy it because I get into so many things that you have to do a lot of work about. Yes, to. to, to have a good idea of what you ought to do. So it takes quite a little research in, in one character or another uh, to, to do these things. I know of late years you and Mrs. Merrick have done some world traveling. Would you like to give us a brief review of where you've been? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we've uh, been to Europe twice and have enjoyed our trips each time. Uh, we've traveled fairly when Mrs. Merrick has been in Mexico four or five times and she really loves to be there. I've only been twice and I, I enjoy Mexico and would like to go back there again. But uh, we've traveled a good deal over the United States, not that we've been everywhere, but uh, we even we enjoy driving, and most of our traveling is by car. We also have a pretty nice uh, uh, cabin in in southern Colorado that which we enjoy going to, and it's on the Rio Grande River, and, and I love to fly fish. Trout, yes. <laughs> Do you have a station around here such as Lake Murray? Well, you were around here when they were building Lake Murray. Right? Oh, yes, and when fishing the first day it was open. And, and uh, uh, I as I remember, I didn't catch a fish, but uh, uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Noble and I took uh, Sam and, and Ward Jr. on that trip, <laughs> and they both caught that day, and they were, they were really tickled boys. What about your uh, activities in ranching, Ward? Have you, I know you've got a Merrick Farms, you call it now, and well, you've got some operations down in Love County. Well, we have sold the Love County place. Our, it, it, the, the operation of the two places didn't match very well, and uh, we uh, have this farm up by the airport park now, and we've been doing a lot of cleanup up there. When we bought the place, uh, <coughs> we bought it from Maury Tucker, Fred, Fred Tucker's uh, son, and uh, it, the undergrowth on it was really something to behold, and and uh, that land up there is very rich land, and, and uh, it, the trees on it were immense, but we, nevertheless, we bulldozed, uh, oh, just an awful lot of trees out there and really cleaned up about 300 acres of land. But there's no cheap way of cleaning up land. <laughs> no, it comes <laughs> big. But uh, we, uh, we do have uh, some land up there that we irrigate and we raise alfalfa and the sorghums of one kind or another and that the mainly chopped up into silage and, and we've had quite a cattle feeding uh, 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 project up there 
it, but I believe that we're going to uh, change that into a little different type of operation from um, where we've already started now. And just so what we're going to do, I don't know, but I believe that we're going to use the irrigated land that we have up there in a different way than we have been using it. It's uh, quite a quite a venture, and it's interesting. I the only Ward Jr. runs that, though. I drove by the south end of it on the Air Park Road Sunday afternoon, and I noticed the Lord was doing a pretty good job of irrigating. <laughs> <laughs> wow, did too good a job, really. <laughs> That's <laughs> hot. There's water standing out there. The, uh, well, it, uh, it, the river got up high enough to have washed away quite a little of the land out there, and, I, and in, in doing that, it left uh, one of the large butane tanks we had at uh, one of the irrigation pumps <laughs> washed away. And it's, it's uh, down the river today, uh, mm -hmm. quite a few miles, and to find it, we warned, uh, got one of the pilots out to the downtown airport to <laughs> fly up and down the uh, river until we can locate it. <laughs> but we have it located now, we think, and I'm not quite sure how we're going to get it out. Ward, though, one thing I haven't asked you is uh, what church you all are a member of. Well, I'm not a member of any church, really, uh, although I have been a, mem a Memphis, uh, Methodist. And uh, uh, when I was a boy, I grew up in that church. And, and But uh, I've been away in the oil business. You know, when we started in the oil business, it, uh, it was a 24-hour day job and 365 days a year, and I followed that for something like 40 years, and uh, uh, it, uh, it isn't conductive ordinarily to go into church. It's kind of like being in the newspaper business. <laughs> yeah, you go so much, when you get a chance to slow down, you want to rest. <laughs> I noticed in look, looking at some of the material here that uh, some of your folks were Presbyterians, weren't they? Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Merrick was a Presbyterian, and Mrs. Merrick, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Merrick were Presbyterians. Now, yeah. it's Frank W. Frank W., yeah. Just positively identified them. What in other areas of community service, uh, what uh, have been your services? Well, I was on the draft board for three years, and at the end of that, uh, uh, 1945, when the draft board quit, they made me uh, uh, attorney for the draft board, which was a little different status, but uh, fortunately for posterity, they, I never did have a case on <laughs> <in> that. <laughs> <laughs> three years as a member of the draft board was during World War II. Uh, yes. And so then I, for, I've been very interested in the water supply all these years for four hours more, and uh, that was another field for Leon and Dolby and myself to, to, and as a result of that thing, I, of course, we drilled, uh, the city drilled uh, seven wells out at Newport which are included the test well that Leon and I, which was an old oil well, and Leon and I worked it over into, into an irrigation, not an irrigation well, but a, but a, a, a well for the city. It, uh, the way it's turned out hasn't been too good, but I believe that in modern concept of re finishing these wells, they could be made a great deal more productive than they now are. I'm awfully glad that the city owns them, and I wish they'd do more about it. Yeah, there's still a good standby water supply. Yeah, we need it. Good. Award, uh, if I remember correctly, the Ardmore Planning Board was originally organized about 1955, and you were the first chairman of it. 54, 55. 55, uh, well, yes, and I was, I've forgotten 
now just how long I served uh, on the planning board, but a good long time, and we met uh, nearly well, nearly every week uh, for something or other, and and uh, really had some <laughs> great discussions. And <laughs> yes, I remember those early years. But I can't remember anything that we accomplished that uh, that uh, was of any great note. And, and well, I can in those early years. You were first chairman of it, and I was the first secretary. Yeah, that's right. And we got the people to approve the bond issue to raise the Mountain Lake Dam. Well, that, well, I lied for God. And to drill the well, wells. That was all part of that yeah, water program at that time. That. Well, that's been a great help, well, of course, raising the dam up there. Double the capacity of it, didn't it? The Merrick Foundation put up the first two thousand dollars to to finance the Lake of the Arbuckle uh, uh, survey for the city, and then we didn't take part in it. Then <laughs> <laughs> we don't they didn't take part in it, and now we've got uh, industrial prospects that look like we're going to need a lot more water in the near future. <laughs> well. Are you ready for some more service in the state of the water? <laughs> well, I'm retiring as fast as I can now. And, but, uh, well, all the things you're interested in, Ward, you'll never get a chance to retire. Well, I don't, don't look like it, does it? <laughs> My, uh, I seem to get busier. The only thing being that I'd like to... Uh, your indulgence to come back after I review this and think of some more questions. <laughs> well, okay. You're, you're welcome. So that in the end we get as complete a record as possible for... Well, I, I believe time. in what you're doing, Mac, and you've devoted such an awful lot of time to it, and I, for one, am very grateful to you for doing uh, this work, and, and uh, it is a service that... Uh, uh, real importance uh, to the history of this area and, and uh, I'm glad to have, of my part in it but I, I certainly uh, again want to express my uh, uh, appreciation to you for doing all, doing all of this work. Well thank you Ward. I'm just sorry that we can't get more of it done. <laughs> the real old timers are dying off faster than we're getting them interviewed. <laughs> to get uh, their stories. Yeah. That will keep trying. <laughs>